not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. But as for me, give me liberty or give me death. Good evening and welcome to our notes on Oregon country. Tonight our inquiry question is why did people make the choice to move to Oregon country in the 1840s? So many of you have probably heard of the Oregon Trail. The Oregon Trail, as you see in this map, traveled over half of the country. It started at, on the Mississippi River in Independence, Missouri and went all the way to Oregon. Um, so as we get into it, Think about the choices that were presented and the sacrifices people had to make to move out there. And we will build on this throughout the rest of the week. So beyond the Rockies, we had Lewis and Clark in the early 1800s explore the Louisiana Purchase area. However, we had yet to have many people move to this area other than a handful of mountain men and fur traders that we'll talk about um, coming up here. So what was this land like? So in Oregon country, various lands and climate. This would be very fertile soil, lots of rain, um, as we still see today, especially depending on which part of these states you're in. Mountains, there's forests, we have plateaus, dry areas in between the mountains, and even some deserts. So when we talk about Oregon country, we are talking about Oregon, Washington, Idaho, parts of Wyoming, and parts of Montana. So keep that in mind. Most settlers will travel into the Oregon and Washington area. At this time, there are four main countries that have land claims into Oregon country. The United States has claims, Britain, Russia, and Spain. Russia and Spain just have a handful of settlers living in this area. The United States and Britain have more. So in 1818, the U.S. and Brit Britain decided to jointly occupy the region, meaning it doesn't belong solely to either country. They both own it, and both settlers from both countries can live there. So as you look, you see the mountains in the pictures, you see the landscapes that they had to travel coming over the Oregon Trail. There's rivers, there's hills, there's the huge mountains in the background. And they're traveling in these big trains that we will um, get further and further into. The first people to really settle this area are called mountain men. Mountain men, they would dress in leather, they traded furs, and they would trap furs, so they would go trap beavers and other animals and then sell it to people that will take it out east or out of the country to sell to other people. This life is very hard. During the good times, there was lots of meat to eat, a lot of buffalo meat. And during the hard times, though, when the food got scarce, it was whatever I can eat, I'll eat. One mountain man remembers it this way. I have held my hand in an ant hill until they were covered with ants, then greedily licked them off. This just shows the desperation some would have to go to just because there wasn't much other food around for parts of the year. During the winters, they would often live with Indians, and then come the summertime, they would have these big rendezvous or these big get-togethers. There'd be a big party of a whole bunch of fur traders and mountain men coming together, um, enjoying each other's company, but then also completing business. They would tra trade or sell their furs for other items that they could use. And this was a time for many throughout the region to come together um, and make the connections. As you see in this picture, this is a stereotypical mountain man, big bushy beard, long hair, um, because they need to stay warm throughout the year. So they're constantly covered, facial hair, leather, um, furs. They would often wear porcupine quills. 
around their neck and things that even on the East Coast would, would not be normal at this time. So the trail. Many started to want to go to Oregon because of what we call this Oregon fever over farmland. The farmland, there were stories of producing these huge crops, tall, tall wheat, giant um, vegetables. And this got the farmers in the Midwest and East thinking, ooh, I could have better land and better crops, which would mean a better life for my family. It was about, it was in 1843 when wagon trains, a family started to begin. A wagon train was a group of many families traveling together over the land, working together to get from Independence, Missouri to Oregon country. So they would leave Independence, Missouri, and they would have to leave by May. So what was life like on that trail? On the trail, they would leave by May in order to get to Oregon by October. If they left any later, they were in danger of not making it before the snow hits. And it was very, very difficult to travel in the snow at this time, which would often mean loss of life, even more so than what they would face otherwise. The trail was about 2,000 miles, and there's still remnants of the trail today if you travel throughout the states that the trail was in. So Wagon's Hope, by 6 a.m., the men and the boys had to harness the horses and oxen, and they had to be on the trail. So that means they're up bright and early. They have to have everything ready to go, and by 6 a.m., they're gone for the day. They would take brief stops for lunch, the women would do most of this cooking while the men took care of the oxen and the other cattle. But they would travel from, like I said, 6 in the morning till about 6 or 7 at night. And then at night they would pull their wagons into a circle um, in order to keep the cattle from wandering off and to keep wild animals from attacking the cattle. They faced many hardships. Like I said, Leaving in May, they still had the chance of hit, having snow. It got very hot. The Midwest gets extremely hot in the summertime. So going through Wyoming in July, August, you're going to be faced with 80, 90, 100 degree heat where you're walking most of the day. And cholera and other illnesses. Frequently people would get sick on the trip. And they would just have to, if they died, they would just have to bury them off to the side of the trail. Um, frequently, family members would die um, throughout the trip. They would get sick from the water they're drinking or sick from other um, foods and things like that. But they would travel in these huge groups. This is one example of a wagon train. You see all the different wagons, and then you see all the people walking alongside the wagons. It wasn't sitting in the wagon. Even the kids, for the most part, had to walk. The only ones in the wagon, for the most part, were the ones controlling the horses and the oxen pulling the wagons. So in the end, on this trail, about 50,000 people made the trip um, all the way to Oregon. We still have permanent ruts that have left scars in the earth. Um, throughout this. In this picture you see here's the path where wagons would travel um, along the trail. If you go to Wyoming, Nebraska area you could see things similar to this um, pretty frequently. So why was it that people made the choice to move to Oregon? There was awesome land, great farming, it was a new life. Um, people wanted to start over. They wanted to get to this place that was clean and um, could just leave all their past behind them and begin anew. We're going to get more into what life was like on the Oregon Trail tomorrow and Wednesday in class. So come prepared with these notes to discuss them, and we'll go from there. Have a good evening.